The People's Democratic Party is considering working with other political parties to defeat the All Progressives Congress in Nigeria's forthcoming general elections. What are the possibilities of this? And President, a uh, professor rather, King Simuhalu has resigned from uh, the African Democratic Congress following his defeat at the party's presidential primary. We'll analyze his reasons and how this affects the party. Plus, we have in-depth analysis of today's newspaper headlines. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Today's beautiful Tuesday morning. We'll be reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bertels. It promises to be a bumper package as we have uh, interesting conversations as earlier advertised on the program. But let's start off with a look at what's trending around the country and indeed internationally today. Uh, we start off with the um, Nigerian National Information Technology Development Agency issuing a code of practice. And of course, this has elicited uh, quite a number of reactions uh, from Nigerians across the spectrum of the political and social divide, some in support and some in opposition as well. Now, what is the National Information Technology Development Agency? Well, this is uh, the organization or the arm of the federal government tasked uh, with, um, with administering and regulating uh, the information technology space in the country. Uh, if you check their profile, they say that uh, they are the official government body that develops and regulates information technology in Nigeria. And of course, this uh, has become a very, very important aspect of um, national life, indeed international and uh, global practices, as, as it were, uh, with the use of technology for different uh, endeavors of life. Well, what is the press release of the information technology uh, development agency saying it's um it is it was titled was released yesterday monday 13th june entitled national information technology development agency issues code of practice for interactive computer service platforms uh, slash internet intermediaries and conditions for operating in nigeria we'll read a few you know <laughs> lines from that but it says the national information technology development agency is mandated by section six of the NIDNA, NIDNA Act of 2007 to standardize, coordinate, and develop regulatory frameworks for all information technology practices uh, in Nigeria uh, in accordance with its mandates. President Mohamed Buhari, GCFR, the, the release continues by saying, directed the agency to develop what it calls a code of conduct, a code of practice, rather, for interactive computer service platforms and internet intermediaries in, in, um, in, uh, in in bracket to put the online uh, uh, platforms, or in parenthesis, online platforms, in collaboration with the relevant regulatory agencies and stakeholders. Now, it went on to say in a second paragraph, in line with the directive, NITA wishes to present to the public a code of practice for interactive uh, computer service platforms and internet intermediaries for further review and input, is what it's saying, presenting this to the public for further review and input. We went on to say that the code of practice is aimed at protecting fundamental human rights of Nigerians and non-Nigerians living in the country as well as define the guidelines for interacting in the digital ecosystem. It says this is in line with international best practices, blah, blah, blah. But let's go to the... I mean, it said all these things, you know, when they went on to say the code of practice was developed in collaboration with the NCC, that's the Nigerian Communications Commission, and the NBC, the National Broadcasting Commission of Nigeria, uh, as well as input from interactive computer service platforms such as Twitter, uh -huh. <laughs> Facebook, uh -huh. WhatsApp, Instagram, Google, and TikTok, amongst others, and you can you can imagine that immediately people are uh, going to be defensive, like what's going on? Indeed, that was uh, what we aggregated as a response from uh, a lot of Nigerians. They said they also that also other relevant stakeholders uh, with peculiar knowledge in this area were consulted, as, such as civil society organizations and expert groups. But uh, the, the important part, uh, the condition. So let's look at what it says very quickly. Uh, it says. Similarly, to ensure compliance with the code of practice, NIDA also wishes to notify all interactive computer service platforms and internet uh, intermediaries operating in Nigeria that the federal government uh, of Nigeria has set out conditions for operating in the country. Conditions for operating in the country. 
These conditions address issues around legal registration operations, uh, taxation, managing prohibited publication in line with Nigerian laws, blah, blah, blah. The conditions are as follows. One, it says establish a legal entity, i.e. register with the Corporate Affairs Commission. Two, appoint a designated country representative to interface with Nigerian authorities. Three, it says abide by all regulatory demands after establishing a legal presence. Four, comply with all applicable tax obligations on its operations under Nigerian law. Five, provide a comprehensive compliance mechanism to avoid the publication of prohibited content and unethical behavior on their platform. I have to probably read that again so you understand it. It says, provide a comprehensive compliance mechanism to avoid publication of prohibited content and unethical behavior on their platform. That should be ordinarily, you know, uh, straightforward, right? Okay, let's go on. Six, provide information to authorities on harmful accounts. Suspected botnets, that's robots, you know, who uh, are robots on the uh, internet. Troll groups and other coordinated disinformation networks and deleting any information that violates Nigerian law within an agreed time. So uh, everything there seems to be straightforward. I mean, normal, uh, but if you look at uh, some of them, it, it has to do with access to information that ordinary may not be really be readily available to government. Uh, this might include information on people. All right, and this is where, as usual, <laughs> um, some civil society groups have been up in arms. Um, you know, the same civil society governments that they consulted, uh, and the people, the users of the internet, have also been uh, asking questions. You know, but you know, you've had arguments for and arguments against. Some are saying. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. This is pretty straightforward. And there are other countries that are coming up, have come up with regulations like this before. Um, some are saying, hey, see, people, there's nothing to worry about. The only place that we should be looking at is Section 5. And, uh, you know, other laws are actually, other provisions or conditions are, you know, tailored towards eradicating fake news and reading the cyberspace of trolls and social bullies. Now, this is a problem. You know, it's an issue. Some would argue in our, uh, in our use of social media, it's an issue, you know, where people just have uh, bots, especially on Twitter. These are accounts that are created that run on their own. Nobody's there, just create a profile and it's a uh, code. You know, bot stands for Robert, basically, you know. So these accounts run on their own and they attack people, they spread fake news. They're not real human beings. So these are problems. Um, you have certain groups, certain agendas that are being you know, spread on the internet uh, using fake news and fake, you know, arguments and all that and just basically attacking people, you know, and, and, and it cannot continue forever. Something needs to be done. But some are saying, hey, elections are around the corner and this is why the government has decided to deploy this now. We're all aware um, that Twitter was suspended or access to Twitter was restricted for Nigerians for some months. Um, so this was expected after that and now we're seeing it um, some are saying, before you condemn or praise, please read the provisions. I think they're pretty straightforward, um, but uh, it remains to be seen what the outcome will be. Ordinarily, these are conditions that should be for the benefit of uh, internet users in the country. I mean, nobody wants to be uh, a victim of troll accounts or uh, you know, misinformation or fake news or uh, bots. Nobody wants to be the victim of that. Uh, troll groups, uh, the conditions talk about troll groups, uh, coordinated disinformation networks. These are dangers um, to, to our society. These are dangers to our society and they need to be checked. But the motive for checking them and the extent to which the government goes uh, will the, with the, with the powers and the rights of individual Nigerians who have nothing to do with coordinated disinformation networks or troll groups, would they be restricted or restrained? That is the question uh, um, people are asking. Some are going on to say, oh, the government can't use NIN to track people. Um, yeah, that's what they want to, that, that came to a war uh, to, to shoot innocent Nigerians. 
Yeah, they can't use the NIN to track terrorists in the bush, um, but uh, they want to gag the citizens, is what some people say. So these are some of the responses, you know. But the truth, some would argue, is that everything needs to be regulated, including social media. It needs to be regulated. It's a free-for-all right now. I mean, things are going on. Is it about the loss of moral values and standards in our society? You can find it on social media. And it cannot continue unabated. Something needs to be done about what's going on on social media and drastically. But the extent to which it will go and the sincerity of the intent and purpose is what could be, um, could be argued about and whether this will restrain the freedoms, curtail the freedoms of Nigerians. Let's move on uh, to a sporting trending story. This one has to do with Nigeria's uh, Super Eagles scoring 10 goals and uh, defeating the nation of Sao Tome uh, in the African Nations Cup qualifiers by 10 goals to nil. 10 goals to nil. And of course, uh, this match uh, took place at uh, the, uh, uh, the stadium known as Adrar Stadium. So this is Nigeria against Sao Tome and Principe. Uh, I mean, some Nigerians, you know, being reminiscent or, you know, talk, talking about the days when they heard stories of um, Nigeria defeating uh, India. You know, <laughs> when we were kids, we all had those stories that um, the, uh, the football turned into a, a, a lion and uh, India scored 10 goals or something like that. But this time around, it was quite interesting to see the Super Eagles playing very nice, fluid football. They could have actually scored maybe 15 goals, uh, but they scored 10 goals. Uh, four goals coming uh, from Victor Simen. And some of the new names uh, in the team also grabbed some, some of the goals as well. Quite interesting. Uh, it was a free kick as well. Um, uh, Ogene Karo Etebo scoring a fantastic free kick. And so it's been a quite a good one. A number of people saying this is good. Uh, it helps to douse attention in the country. It helps to make uh, give Nigerians something to celebrate in the midst of bleak happenings in the country. Killings, insecurity, economic downturn is something that has given Nigerians something to cheer about. It was quite interesting, uh, Victor Simon opening the scoring uh, on the day after a cross coming from the left by Moses Simon, who was captaining the team at the beginning of the match. Uh, Ahmed Musa came on to also do a very good job, very good job. He took on the captain's handband and Moses Simon went <laughs> to sit down on the bench. Uh, Musa played well. And uh, one of the, I noticed uh, comments uh, by Nigerians on this match was that Ahmed Musa, who has been, uh, who has been seen as one of the members of the team who is on his way out and will be spending more time on the bench, actually played very well, very, very well, and showed that he understood what the coach wanted him to do and he showed that his time is not up. Now, some have said, hey, don't be too quick. This is not Senegal. This is not Egypt. This is not Ghana. This is not La Côte d'Ivoire. This is not Morocco. This is Sao Tome and Principe. And that's why he played so well. Let him display what he displayed against the victims, then we'll believe him. But I, I think it's clear that uh, Ahmed Musa's time with the Super Eagles is not yet quite done. And he, in, 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 he indicated that with a superb, fantastic display. The defense was solid as well, not conceding any goal. The goalkeeper did well. Overall, a good day for Nigeria's Super Eagles. But can they replicate this uh, against uh, a bigger opponent? That's the qu question um, uh, to be answered. This is a second win in this qualifiers following their 2-1 uh, defeat of Sierra Leone at the MK or Biola Stadium on Thursday. So Regals have six points in that group as they are looking for to wrap up their qualification uh, for the Nations Cup and finish the business without wasting any time. All right, uh, I think we should have ended the <laughs> trending segment with that story. That is a cheerful one because we're going to not so che cheerful trending one. And of course, Nigerians are complaining about the national grid collapsing for the umpteenth time in 2020. Now, we've lost track of how many times the national electricity grid has collapsed this year. Some are saying it's a fifth time in 2022. Some are saying it's a sixth time in 2022. And some are saying is the 17th national grid collapse in 2022. That's a large number, um, but um, you know most of the reports I've seen are saying six. But whether it's fifth, sixth, or 17th, it is the umpteenth time. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's quite sad. There's a report that said that um, 
the, the national you know, electricity output fell to as low as nine megawatts with this latest uh, national grid collapse. It's uh, this described as a wobbly national electricity grid collapsing yet again. So several cities thrown into darkness, including the federal capital territory, Abuja. Um, electricity companies allow, announced late on Sunday that the collapse had occurred just before 7 p.m. Uh, and of course, this, uh, the government blamed poor management and low gas supply as the major causes of repeated breakdowns in the country. This has been the alibi all along. Poor management and low gas supplies. Don't forget the national electricity um, um, uh, architecture was, was collapsed, uh, right? And uh, from the uh, power holding company of Nigeria, you had the generating company of Nigeria, the transmission company, you had the generating companies rather, the transmission company of Nigeria and the distribution companies. Uh, well, it seems that since the unbundling of the collapse, uh, collapsing of uh, PHED, uh, PHC, all right, PHCN, uh, the national grid cannot stay together. Uh, it cannot stay together. So we hope that everything is sorted out. Um, some are saying this is the reason why we need a change in 2023 as far as the uh, governance of this country is concerned. It remains to be seen if the national grid can stand up on its feet again. That's as much as you can take on the trending segment right here on The Breakfast. We'll be right back with more. Uh, and ahead, we look at what the papers have to say. Stay with us.